This fourth video shows you another new question type, a matrix table. In this block of questions, there is a, also a question there that we only want to ask of certain people. So we'll cover both skip and display logic in this video. So now we're going to use a new type of question called a matrix table. In this case, this is for gambling frequency. I'm going to ask people during the last 12 months about how often did you gamble for money on each of these things. We have eight different types of gambling in here. There are other types as well, but just for the demo here, we'll include these ones. So buying lottery tickets and buying instant scratch tickets, and then some frequency responses here too. These questions can be easily set up using a matrix table question. So to start off with, we'll uh, create a new block here of gambling frequency, we'll call it. And we'll create a new question. And this question will also call gambling frequency, but we'll find here that there becomes a limit on how many letters I can put into my variable names. So I'll just do a shortening that I understand because I'll be doing the analysis. So this will make life easy for me later on. Uh, here we need to change the question type from multiple choice to matrix table. And this is almost ready to go. I've just got to put in my information. Now, I want to use rich content editor here because I want that first bit of text during the last 12 months to really stand out. So I'm going to make it bold. I could underline whatever you like, but that's sort of important. This is not about how often you gamble in general. This is about in the last 12 months, about how often did you gamble for money on each of the following activities. All right, and for this one, they need to select one response per line. All right, so select one option for each gambling form. Now I'll show you a nice little trick and why it's kind of handy to set things up in Word before you get into your Qualtrics survey. I can actually select all of these and just paste them in and they're ready to go. Unfortunately, it doesn't work across the top of columns as well, but I can select these one by one and paste them in and save myself having to do the typing. Now, when I get to the last one here, I'll need to create the next column and I just hit enter and there's the next one ready to go. And I can just continue to paste these in. I don't necessarily have to type them all out. You will find sometimes that when you paste things in from Word, it seems to carry over a bit of formatting and might screw things up a little bit. So just be aware of that. This is why we preview surveys and test them. Uh, we'll show you how to do that in a future video. All right, but there we go. I've got that question set up. Now remember, let's change this to forced response. And let's go and have a look at our recode values for this one too. We'll see that if we check all of these options now, there are three options. Actually, there's going to be eight variables in my data set from this, not just one. While it's one question within Qualtrics, I'm actually capturing eight different points of information, how frequently they buy lottery tickets, and then how frequently they buy instant scratch tickets, and then how frequently they play the pokies, and so on. So these variable names are just going to be called gambling frequency, like that short version of the question that I put up there, and then one and two and three. And again, I can change these if I want. I can make this uh, gambling frequency for lottery. And then the next one is gambling frequency for scratchies and so on. So I can go through and change all of these again, just to make my data uh, easier to play with later. Hit close. I'm not going to set all of those up now because there's something else I want to show you. There's one more question we're going to add underneath here, which is, um, have you gambled on, on any of these forms online, including using smartphone apps, because that's what's happening with gambling at the moment. Please select one response. Now this is just going to be a no yes question and see it's trying to be a bit smart again and give me a few options. Again, I can just change the number of points up here and it will give me no and yes as the options and that's precisely what I want. Don't forget to change the question name here. So I'll call this gamble online and I'll make it forced response. But this question kind of doesn't make sense if they don't gamble. So there's no point asking this question if they select never in the last 12 months for all eight items. So what we can use here is two things. We can either use skip logic or display logic. 
So I'll click on the top question, gambling frequency, and use skip logic. And here I can say that if never in the last 12 months count is equal to eight, that is they select never in the last 12 months eight times for all eight options, then they will skip to the end of this block. They won't complete the next question or however many more questions there are in the block. This is really quite common. So we can you know, set up an initial question in a block that sort of says, is this block relevant to you? And if it's not, we can just skip them to the end of that block. That's skip logic. Now I'm gonna show you display logic, which is another way of doing the same thing. But instead of adding the skip logic to the gambling frequency question, we add the display logic to the question that's about to be displayed, the gambling online one. And this determines, should this question be displayed? So skip logic is what happens after I've answered this question and display logic is before I show you this question, should you see this? I don't need to do both. I can just do skip logic or I can just do display logic and that will be fine. But I'm going to do both here just as a demonstration for you. So display logic for this one is for that gambling frequency question, never in the last 12 months, how many times can it be selected for people to see this question? Now with skip logic, if they'd selected never in the last 12 months eight times, it means they're not gamblers. So we're not going to ask them anything more in this block. But for display logic, we're working out what does allow you to see this question. So if they select never in the last 12 months eight times, then they shouldn't be seeing this question. But if they select never in the last 12 months less than eight times, then they'll see this question. So that's two ways of doing a really similar thing for this particular question, either skipping them to the end of the block because they're not eligible for the next question because they're not gamblers, or looking at just this one question and saying you're eligible because you've gambled on something. So this is essentially two ways of doing the same thing. Either way, whether we use display logic or skip logic, this question won't be shown to anybody who selected never in the last 12 months for all eight forms because they're not gamblers. So we don't want to ask them about their gambling online because they're not gamblers. You don't need to do both. These are two ways of getting to the same end. We're just doing it here as a demo. There is another way that you can uh, determine who sees which questions, which will show you in survey flow in one of the upcoming videos. That's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to outline some things that we can do with scales in a survey. We're going to use the problem gambling severity index, which is a really common thing that we use in gambling research. I'm gonna show you how to score a scale within a survey and how we can set it up to look how we want it to look. I'll see you there.